I'll start with this quote from Cervantes. The journey is better than the end. And we have been on a, a fantastic journey together. And it's one that that's part of what I want to do tonight is let you in to that journey and our process. But hopefully, in this case, the end is also pretty good because we think we have a great mission statement and one uh, that you'll all be proud of. The Mission Statement Task Force, again, I want to go through these names just to make sure for those who couldn't be with us here tonight. Moy Brazil, Katie Schutz, John England, Harriet Epps, Grace Golden, Jan Ishi, Peter Jernberg, Greg Johnston, John Lundy, Sandra McK McKay, Melody McNair, Matt Morgan, Paula Pratt, Pat Taylor, Will Tribble, Patty Wade, Eddie Weddick, Max Wondries, and Patrice Worley. And as you'll see, two of the members of the task force uh, were students at the time we started. One is now an alumna, but Will and Grace contributed so much to the task force. You think maybe they would be in a setting with teachers, administrators, and trustees that they would kind of be reserved and not contribute to the process. But let me assure you that they were very vocal participants in the process and added much. And even when we began or continued our work this fall, Grace was able to participate by email and weigh in on the work that we were doing. We met first a little over a year ago, January 9th, 2014. We met generally every other week through May the 1st, and then we resumed meeting in September, and we met a total of nine times. We started with five initial key guiding questions, and these were developed from looking out at other schools and looking at processes that they had gone through, and so we developed these guiding key questions, and I'll read those to you uh, because they were important to our work. We asked, does the mission statement convey the unique strengths and values of Jackson Academy? Does the mission statement inform and lead the school's strategic direction? Realizing that both time and resources are limited, does the mission statement assist the school in making difficult choices among competing worthy programs and interests of students? Does the mission statement convey a clear and achievable promise to current and prospective families about the knowledge, skills, qualities, and attributes a Jackson Academy graduate will possess? Is the mission statement compelling and easily expressed by all members of the Jackson Academy community. And those guiding key questions guided us through our work. This, at the time, was our current mission statement. Since the board has now voted to accept the revised mission statement, it's no longer the current mission statement. But I'll read this to you. Our mission is to serve students who aspire to higher education and lifelong learning in a balanced and nurturing environment in which each student is valued and is challenged to become a responsible citizen who can achieve his or her intellectual, spiritual, emotional, social, and physical potential. And that's a wonderful mission statement. It served this school since 1990. So for 24 years, this was the mission statement of our school. And one of the things, though, that we discovered very early, very early on, particularly with Will and with Grace, as students, one of the first things they said in the first meeting was that we, we didn't even realize the school has a mission statement. They didn't, they didn't know that we had a mission statement. So that told us very early on that while we had this mission statement and those of us in administration and the faculty and the staff, we used it to guide our decisions. It was not making an impact on the students. They didn't know that it existed. So in our first meeting, we divided the task force because as you saw, it's about 20 members of the task force and it's representative of, of alumni, of parents, of students, of faculty, staff, administrators, trustees. So it was representative of all the stakeholder groups. And so the group was, was about 20, which was actually a little larger group than I'd seen other schools use. But to get the representation we wanted on the task force, we, we wanted uh, this, this number. But we did divide into small groups, three small groups, the first meeting. And we asked the, each of the small groups separately, working apart, to rank uh, the current mission statement along nine questions. And I'm reporting these, these rankings to you now. One was, does the mission statement flow from core values? And you see 4.8 is the average the five, five, four and a half are the scores of the three individual groups. Does it answer the question why we exist? 4.8. Is it clear and understandable? 4.7. So we're doing pretty good so far. And so we're thinking, hey, maybe, maybe we have one meeting and we're done. Everything's good. But here's where we began to sense that, yes, maybe we do need to suggest a revision. And that was four. Is it memorable? 2.2. And I'll have to tell you, when I was beginning my interview process with the Board of Trustees for, for the, the, the role of president, I really struggled to memorize the, the, the current mission statement. I felt like that was pretty important, that if I was going to be interviewing for that role, that I needed to at least memorize the mission statement. And it was a real task. I, I had a hard time doing it, but I did it. But then about six months later, it was hard. I mean, I had parts of it. So uh, the memorable part, we ranked at 2.2. .2. Is it compelling? 3.7. 
is an enduring 4.0. It was kind of hard to argue that the mission statement had not been enduring because as we were looking at it, it had been 24 years uh, in existence. Is it on target in our operating environment? Relevant, 3.8. Is it on target in the future operating environment? 3.0. Should it be revised and rewritten? And that was ultimately the question for, did we have work to do? Or do we want to report back to the board that, no, we don't think it should be revised? But every group, all three, ranked that a five, saying, yes, we think the mission statement needs to be revised. We talked about enlarging our perspective. So since we knew at this point we were going to begin this work of revising the mission statement, that each member of the task force was asked to talk about our work among your friends, among your peers, among the stakeholder groups that you're a part of. Bring that perspective back into the task force and share that with us. And they did that regularly. We regularly heard from them about what uh, maybe the middle school faculty thought or, or what some students thought, and they brought those perspectives back to our task force. The second meeting on January 23rd, Peter Jernberg gave a comprehensive overview of the development of our current mission statement. And that took place in 1990, and he gave us a great history of that. And it was good for us to look back as we began to look forward. Also, prior to that meeting, each task force member was asked to think about three words or phrases that express the strengths of Jackson Academy. And these strengths were recorded, and we, we logged them. So if, even if your strength had been shared before, we noted that so that we could get a frequency of the recurrence of the words. And, and then also, we asked task force members to think about one experience that completes this statement. When JA is at its very best, JA is, and fill in the blank. And so during that meeting, we had the opportunity to share those strengths and those stories. And I'm going to kind of start in reverse here. The stories, I don't have time tonight to share the stories with you. Let me just say it was a very powerful time. It was a lot, there, was, there were some, some tears that were shed. Uh, we all left that meeting feeling very, very strong about JA and what this school does and how we serve students and families. Uh, I wish everybody, again, the journey is better than the end. I wish everyone could have been in the room that day, and several of us talked about that, how, gosh, this was so powerful for JA. Some great stories, some going back 25, 30 years. But then we also talked about these three words or phrases, and, and you see these here. I'm not going to read all of them. I'll read maybe the top few. Um, community and family, 15 reoccurrences of that. So that's almost everybody on the task force. Nurturing, balanced, innovative, academic excellence, compassionate, faith, leadership, opportunity, prepared, innovation and excellence, holistic. And then the other words are there. And those are not ranked in any particular order. They just occurred one time. I love the, the one here at the very end. Preparation for life. And that's what Jay does. And so we, we celebrated those strengths. We allowed those strengths to guide our work. We examined a lot of other schools' mission statements. We looked at a lot of them. I'm going to share a few with you here just to give you a flavor of some that we particularly like. The mission of the children's school is to enrich minds and inspire dreams. And this school is in Atlanta, Georgia. And we actually did an exercise with this particular mission statement that Damien Cavanaugh, who's the SAIS vice president, shared with me. And we said the mission of the school is to enrich minds and inspire dreams. And then we each had to, I think we got in small groups again, to, to try to think about, well, okay, what kind of school is this? Is it in an urban area? Is it in a suburban area, rural area? What ages do they serve? Do they wear uniforms? What's their curriculum like? To try to figure out from that mission statement what might a school look like from that. And that was a fun exercise. The Baylor School, we enjoy a great partnership and friendship with the Baylor School. Baylor's mission is to instill in its students both the ability and the desire to make a positive difference in the world. And then Ravenscroft in North Carolina. The Ravenscroft community, guided by our legacy of excellence, nurtures individual potential and prepares students to thrive in a complex and interdependent world. And again, this is just to give you some sense of the mission statements we looked at. So the task force was asked to draft a mission statement for the school, each of us individually, to draft our own mission statement. And we submitted those on February the 13th, and then we sent them to MindPower uh, for evaluation to get their thoughts. And so they came to campus on February the 20th, and MindPower is a firm based in Atlanta. And the second half of tonight, you're going to hear from Lisa Jordan, who's with MindPower, presenting the big idea and some of the branding identity. But we had asked them initially to help us with some of the mission statement work. And so we had sent all these mission statements to them. I really thought this February 20th meeting was going to be them coming in and saying, we like these four or five, maybe Wordsmith here or there. We kind of react, react to that, and we're kind of close to being done. That's, that's what I thought was going to happen. 
Um, and they, when they were on campus February 20th, they spent one day in discovery where they met with focus groups and began to learn about Jackson Academy, and then they met with the task force that afternoon. Well, we didn't get, that's not what happened at that meeting. Instead, we had a lesson in what mission statements should do and what they are. And then they ultimately left us with a lot of questions. So they didn't provide many answers other than some background here, but they talked about a strong mission statement, and this is their work, powerful, memorable, credible, actionable, and authentic. And those were the things that they said a strong mission statement should be. And they gave an example of trying to get to the very essence of what an organization does, and they encouraged us in that. And this is the mission of the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center is to eliminate cancer in Texas, the nation, and the world through outstanding programs that integrate patient care, research, and prevention, and through education for undergraduate and graduate students, trainees, professionals, employees, and the public. That's the mission statement of University of Texas MD Anderson. And they took that and they showed us this example. Really, as you start to boil that down to the essence, the mission of the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center is to eliminate cancer, and even more, making cancer history, getting to the essence of really what it is the organization is about. A few examples from industry. Starbucks, to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. And again, these are examples that MindPower left with the task force. Nike, to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. If you have a body, you are an athlete. Wheelock College, which is a client of MindPowers, to improve the lives of children and families. It doesn't get much simpler than that, or direct. So the questions they left us with, again, they really didn't even, other than to say that our initial drafts were kind of we were, very, we were all over the place in our initial drafts. We had a lot of different things. They were kind of trying to figure out who, who we are as a school from that. They said, what's essential to Jay's DNA? What's most important and what's less so? Because if everything's important, then nothing's important. So how can we make those decisions? Where does faith or Christianity fit? What's enduring? What's true today and what's aspirational? Who will you never be? And then this question in red, and again, this is their work, to what end? To what end? Why are you doing all this? Why have this school here? To what end? And that was a question that we really wrestled with. And we were like, well, what do you mean to what end? You know, it was, it was a good challenge question for us to think beyond even what happens inside the, the gates of Jackson Academy. To what end? Also, about that time, a friend of mine who's the CEO of another nonprofit in, in town suggested that I read The Advantage by Patrick Lencioni. Uh, which is about organizational health, and it's, it's, a, it's, a whole, it's really not about mission statements. It's about organizational health, but in its section on clarity and defining clarity, it talks about a mission and, what, and answering six clarity questions, and the first one is mission, and it was really strong and informative to me, and so I said, guys, I've just read something here that I think it's adding to our, our, our thoughts, so we bought copies of the Advantage for everyone on the task force, and we asked them to read the section on the mission and the why of an organization. And so a, the Advantages framework entered into our discussion that the mission should answer the question, why do we exist? Well, we had said that earlier, but really focusing on that, it should be completely idealistic. To figure it, that out, we should ask the question, how do we contribute to a better world? And then stop just shy of the completely idealistic statement to make the world a better place. Although if you'll note, the Baylor School, if you remember that mission statement, almost did that. It, and they also said it's not meant to be a differentiator. If you think, and they use the example of, of both a masseuse and a hospital might have the mission, we exist to eliminate pain and suffering in the world. So they said a mission, the why of your existence, doesn't necessarily have to be a differentiator. And then the how, the how do we behave, the how of how we deliver the mission, that really shouldn't be mixed with the why. That should be answered by core values and other things satisfying the clarity piece. So after hearing from MindPower, getting a lesson from them, some, some challenging questions, reading the sections and the advantage, we sort of all put our hand up about the same time and said, you know, I didn't really like my first draft very much. I, I'd, like another, I'd like another shot at that. I want to write another mission statement for the school because now that I know all this, that first one, I, you know, I, don't, I don't really like that one anymore. So we all felt that sense. We had learned a lot through this process. So everyone drafted another mission statement for the school, focusing on the questions, to what end and why do we exist? And we resubmitted drafts on April the 23rd. And then we used SurveyMonkey to go in and each independently rank all the drafts 
one to five or one to ten was maybe our scale, comments. And that was so that we didn't have to come into a room and your statement comes up and 19 other people start taking it apart. We were able to do that uh, in a way that, that allowed us to do that. So April 17th, on 20, April 17th, that meeting, before we submitted the drafts on April the 23rd, we actually studied the SAIS survey results. And when we did that, that really informed our work because if you remember, if you participated in that survey, the design of it is along the same 25 to 27 criteria. It asks, what do you value, what do our stakeholders value the most in a school? And then along that same set of criteria, it asks, how are we performing in those areas of value? So it allows us to see, here's what our community values the most in the school, and here's what our community says we're doing the best as a school. So we had that meeting before the drafts were due on April the 23rd. May the 1st, we met. Seven statements from that ranking process really emerged as our, as our favorites. And we had some variations, so if you included the variations, it was actually 11 statements. And we discussed those in depth. And we concluded that meeting with a preferred statement. I'll have to tell you, though, I, I, I knew that our work wasn't done. We weren't there. There was just kind of a sense that, okay, we're, we're pretty tired. You know, May in the school year is a very tiring month. We're, we're finishing school. And we have been hard at work. And we just said, that I think we need to take really a pause in our work. Uh, we need to shape our thoughts. And we, and we did that by reaching out to, to MindPower to say, here's where we are. Also, Kathy Hansen with Marks and Lundy, she is a really a national and international school consultant and had been at the Baylor School and has been consulting the last seven years. She's been consulting with Jay those entire seven years. We were actually her first client, but she's in a lot of schools. She knows Jay well. David Strait with the Center for Spiritual and Ethical and Education. We have a new partnership that's going back about a year, year and a half with him now. And so we asked him that for input, what do you think? Again, we took that pause in our work. Um, and, and my power had indicated that really, until they were back on campus and did a full deep dive two-day discovery on campus, they didn't feel like they could really help us much more. So we, we took a pause over the summer. We met again in September, September 16th. Mind Power had been on campus for two days, had done all of their discovery, and they met with us at the end of that. And, and they, again, they, they had some, some information for us from the discovery, and then they left us, and we had a, a meeting without them there. And the task force really, we had, a, we had a mission statement, but there was a lot of angst over it. And there, there was really some, some discomfort in the room over what we had at that time. And it had to do with this idea that the mission statement should only have the why and none of the how. And so through a, a really neat collaborative process that was very much, for those of us who were there, several of us made this comment, it was a God moment where one person said something which then tagged onto what someone else said. We went around the room and it all came together. And just it was, just, it was a, a really neat time where we just said, you know what? We need to put a little bit of the how back in and here's the part we need to put back in. And when we did that, there was a noticeable sense of relief in the room that everyone felt like, yes, that fits us. That's who we are. So on October 14th, we met once again to finalize that particular version we left that night with. We considered actually 24 variations of the statement you're about to see, and it included choices about individual words, punctuation, even conjunction decisions. But we literally had 24 versions of basically the same mission statement and just had decisions around that. And then unanimously and enthusiastically recommended a new mission statement for the school to the Board of Trustees, which they received on October the 28th. And they received this report, very similar report, and then they in turn unanimously approved and adopted the task force recommended new mission statement for the school. And uh, Ashley said something earlier. It's, it's, a, it's a revised statement of our mission. It's not a revised mission. We don't see this mission as a course correction or a change for where JA is going. This is just a better statement of who JA is, is as a school already. And by choosing fewer words and less words, it gives us clarity and it gives us the ability to focus on those words. It answers some of those questions about what's most important so we can have more clarity, more focus, and more alignment around those fewer words. But again, we think this is a restatement of Jackson Academy's historic mission as a school. Mind power, they said, after being on campus and listening in your community, the mission statement accurately describes Jackson Academy. You are living it out. Damian Cavanaugh, I mentioned him earlier with SAIS, that's the Southern Association of Independent Schools. He said, it literally gives me chill bumps. That is who Jay is. 
Doris Brickle, a founding parent of the school, the grandmother of Maury Brazil, who was on the task force. I had the great privilege of meeting with her in my office right around this middle of October, and we had this settled. And I said, Ms. Brickle, could I share with you what, what appears to be our recommendation for the new mission statement of the school? And she said, absolutely. I did. Maury was there. And she said, that gives me goosebumps. And then she had some other things to say, and then she came back and she said, I like it. And that was a real affirmation that the task force had connected with the founding purpose of this school, the founding purpose of why we exist. I had the privilege of sharing this uh, same presentation with the faculty on January the 5th when we returned from the holidays. And our faculty ha has, has received it very well. And one of the, they've made many nice comments about it. But one of the things, just right afterwards, I, I walked right down here and several of them said, my child graduated from JA and that's what this school did for my child. It's who we are as a school. And, and I heard that from several different teachers. And some of them had children who graduated five years ago and some 15 years ago. And so it is a real affirmation of our school. So here is the revised mission statement of Jackson Academy. Within our nurturing and spiritual community, Jackson Academy inspires and equips each student to lead a life of purpose and significance. I'll read that one more time. Within our nurturing and spiritual community, Jackson Academy inspires and equips each student to lead a life of purpose and significance. A couple things about this I'll point out. Nurturing, spiritual, each student, those words, and those words are all in our prior mission statement. So we connected to those and brought those forward into this mission statement. We talk about really the, 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 the how part that we put back in is that beginning part within our nurturing and spiritual community. That's really the how that we deliver our mission and what we do here. But it just felt like we were missing something to not have that in there because that is so who we are as a school. And so the way this statement sets up for those of us who are part of this community, whether we're, we're faculty and staff, whether we're parents, students, all of us here, we, our actions, what we do, our programs, all of those things should create a nurturing and spiritual community. And we have the ability to say, if, if a particular action is outside of that, we can say that's not really who we are as a school. And our primary work to do here as a school, the faculty, the staff, it's to inspire and equip each student, that each student being so important to us that we focus on the one, the individual. This is not about students in mass. This is about caring and getting to know each student. And our work to do is to inspire and equip them far more than simply to educate them. We have to equip them to enter a 21st century changing world that's changing at a very rapid rate. And then the to what end question. Why are we doing all this? It's so that they may lead lives of purpose and significance. That's the sending, that's, the, that's the, the forward looking point of the mission statement. We're doing all of this, why we exist is to lead a life of purpose and significance. And so we're very proud uh, as a task force of this collective work together. We're, we're excited that the Board of Trustees uh, adopted this. I'll tell you one quick story and I've probably gone over my time, but I came Friday night of, of the student-led JA retreat. The students had chosen the theme for the retreat and it was what they were interested in focusing on for students and they chose purpose. They chose purpose. That's what they wanted to focus on as, as students was, was their purpose. And so I sat right up there and heard David Hederman talk from this stage about purpose and significance. And we had just finalized this recommendation, getting ready to bring it to the board. And so it was just an incredible affirmation that this is what our students are hungry for. This is what they are focused on and thinking about. So we are extremely, extremely proud of this mission statement. Again, the faculty has received it well. Again, I, I hope for you, as it did for the faculty, this is not, again, a different direction for the school, but it's an accurate statement of who Jackson Academy is. And I know for, for me, for the task force, we feel incredibly blessed to be a part of this school and to be a part of helping carry out this incredible mission and work that this school does. Thank you.